Alan here for Old English Outfitters. So today we took a look at a very interesting shotgun that we have gotten in recently. It's called the Dickinson Arms XXPA. Dickinson Arms is the importer. It's made by a company called Commando over in Turkey. Now, <clears throat> lately there's been a bit of a trend of shotguns, semi-automatic shotguns that are designed to look like and function like AR-15 rifles because of that whole AR-15 rifle look. This one is kind of aimed at that look, that style. Uh, that has some advantages, we'll talk about those. Has a couple disadvantages, we'll talk about those. This one is a hybrid shotgun. It's a little bit different than a lot of the others. It is kind of primarily intended as a semi-automatic shotgun, but it also will very easily convert to a pump-action shotgun without tools and literally on the fly while you're using it. And we'll uh, talk about how you do that. It comes packaged in a very nice, attractive hard case, fitted. The, the foam inside is fitted for the components. Comes with a sling, comes with three five round magazines, box type magazines. They actually have a rail adapter on the bottom of them so you could uh, hook them to a rail system of some sort. If you had one, it was convenient. The gun has some rails on it, but they're not really placed conveniently for a magazine storage, at least not in my opinion, but anyway, you could do that. The gun itself, Stock configuration is not, repeat, not adjustable. It does have a rubber butt pad back here. Uh, would do a little bit to absorb recoil. Mostly it's there to prevent slippage. This is not adjustable. We've got a kind of a, a thumb hole type stock arrangement here with a cheek piece. Carry handle like an AR-15. It's a dual setup, like kind of like an AR-15, kind of, because the second, instead of being a, a small aperture and a ghost ring, you've got an aperture and you've got a groove, okay? This assembly is, by turning the knobs, removable so you could take it off. You got a rail underneath so you could put a, a, a red dot or something like that up there, which would probably be a pretty good idea with a weapon of this type. The front side also has a Picatinny rail set up. Again, it, it kind of favors an AR-15 in look. Uh, function is very different, doesn't adjust the same way. Uh, it, it does adjust, but, but not exactly the same way an AR-15 does. This also could be removed if you had some other arrangement back there and you got a rail system there. Uh, working from the back back up, we've got uh, uh, controls that are essentially like an AR-15 controls. Now we do have an ambidextrous sling point on either side. It's just a simple metal loop for a snap hook sling, which is what comes with it. Up front here, we've got magazine release there. And if we turn the gun over, we've got a magazine release down here too. So you can release the magazine either way, works fine. Bolt release and safety are placed exactly like and work just exactly like an AR-15. The uh, magazine well has got these lighter, these cutouts, so does the trigger guard. Working forward from there, we've got the gas system up here. There's the fore handle, which would be used, or forearm, which would be used to pump the gun when you convert it. You've got some rails up here, rail underneath, rail on each side for lights, lasers, and similar types of accessories. The barrel comes with a removable breacher type choke. It's a cylinder bore barrel. Uh, so that's kind of the gun from front to back. So in semi-automatic mode, all you have to do once you put a magazine in is charge the bolt just like you would do many other things. Now notice we don't have an AR-15 type charging handle. We got this up on the side here, okay? So from there it runs semi-automatic. Our experience in shooting it was that it was flawless in semi-automatic, worked just fine. Uh, any semi-automatic shotgun is typically gonna require a certain power level of shell. If you go below that power level, it's not gonna reliably run the action. We ran a couple different things in it, just something we had, it was convenient. Worked okay, no troubles. Very interesting. To convert it to pump, what you have to do is, right up here on the front where my finger is, there's a button, and the button's on both sides. You have to push both of those buttons in, and then the slide handle backs up just literally like a half an inch, okay? Once you've done that, you now have a pump action. Points to its advantage. Kind of ingenious, very, very simple. Not difficult at all, doesn't require tools, and you can do it on the fly. So that's pretty good. There's a disadvantage to it. 
Well, this thing's kind of built primarily to be a semi-automatic shotgun. So when you convert it to pump, it still thinks to a certain degree that it's a semi-automatic shotgun. So when you run the pump, you've got to run it really briskly and take it all the way back nice and sharp. We had a few stoppages when we didn't do that. So you're against that, that recoil spring pressure. It's not like a pump where you can just throw the pump open and leave it open. That pressure fights against you just a little bit. So, and again, we had a couple stoppages with it, but it has to do with ammunition we were using, has to do with our technique on using it, okay? With some practice and good ammunition, I think you'd be fine, you'd be able to work it that way. Theoretically, you should be able to shoot any lightweight 12 gauge load in it, right? Possible exception being the really small mini shells. We didn't try those. Usually they don't work real well in stuff like this anyway, so we didn't try them. So when you run the pump on it, you gotta run it nice and briskly to make sure that it hits the ejector and throws them out. We also noticed in doing that, because we weren't running it maybe quite as brisk as we should have, that being me, if I tilted the gun a little bit when I, when I jacked the slide on it, that had a tendency to get them to fall out there a little easier. Because of that spring pressure, it'll come back kind of quick on you if you're not holding it. And you can, and we experienced a couple times, catch rounds coming out. Is that a big deal? Once you, once you understand the gun and you know what it does and you know what it's designed to do, I don't think that's a big problem really. It's just a particular quirk of this particular type of firearm. Again, worked flawlessly in semi-automatic, which is kind of its primary function. The ability to run it as a pump is kind of a secondary. It's a nice secondary, especially if uh, for some reason you had low-powered shells and you needed to run it, but you just can't run it in semi-automatic mode. Biggest thing to remember about the semi-automatic part is that spring pressure. You're fighting that spring pressure, and that, I'm convinced, is what caused a couple of the minor stoppages we had. Interesting gun. Uh, for me, this, this whole straight arrangement here, for me, this could have been up a little higher, and I'd have felt better about it with a cheek well, but I was able to look over the top of this and use the front sight with no trouble. Could hit what I was shooting at. Very interesting shotgun. It's biggest features that are so interesting is the fact that it's a semi-automatic that will convert to a pump. So that creates its own advantages and creates its own disadvantages. You just got to learn how to operate it and run it correctly and you'll be fine. Retail on these is like $750, so it's not horribly expensive, especially for the type of gun it is. Any semi-automatic shotgun tends to gas operated, which is what this is, tends to be a little on the heavy side. This is a little on the heavy side. But if you favor this style and you want a shotgun and you want something that's kind of cool that'll convert both ways, not a bad way to go. So uh, there you go. That's what we have for you today on this. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Alan for Old English Outfitters.